and uh, with only 10 points in arrears. No doubts about the fact that Sandhurst have won on both wings all day and uh, their move of Gooch onto a wing in that quarter was a beauty. He got eight kicks on this outer side of the ground and uh, I think Noel Cowling's been a most disappointing player for Golden Square. He's been beaten by both opponents. Let's have a look at Malcolm Cowling. Uh, got uh, ten kicks to date, Shane. Three in the first, uh, five in the second, two in the third. Total of ten kicks. Didn't do much in that third quarter, as you say. Just the two kicks. I uh, wonder what can happen now. There's Lee Gallagher and Kent Ward jostling a little bit in the centre as they get ready for this very, very vital last quarter. TV8 bringing you all the action. There's the bounce stick at the last quarter underway. Frankie Coglin went up and got the uh, punch away against Percy Adlam. It's on the ground now as Billy Nolder goes in now and fires on the hand pass to Michael Lennigan. And here's danger now as Lennigan fires onto that left foot, goes toward Mac McAvale. McAvale's out in front, has the ball punched away, and the umpire's pulled out a free kick here to Mark McAvale. Well earned, and McAvale's got the mark. He's 40 metres out. He's in the uh, South Bendigo Social Club area. Here's the lead from Coglin. Coglin marks, or could have gone on too. Took a couple of steps forward, Alan, actually, and uh, might have been a bit lucky to get away with it. Yes, he's had a shot for goal early in this game, and he, he kicked it like a fullback too. So uh, here's Frankie. He's got a, a lot of pressure on him now because uh, this could be a, a handy break for Sandhurst uh, in the opening minute of this final quarter of the BFL Grand Final. A fair few of his mates from the little town of Bridgewater be here watching Frank and David Collins, I'd say, I'd say and also Chris Pollock from Golden Square. There's, there's the Frankie kick. Coggins' kick. It's short, and uh, off hands for a behind. Great effort from Ross Adlam there to climb over the back of uh, his uh, teammate in Kenny Smith, who's uh, tall enough as it is. And that gave Adlam about eight foot in the air there to uh, get the hand on that ball, and uh, that was certainly good captain stuff from the uh, Golden Square big man. 13-13 plays 12-8. Billy Nalder doing the work on the ground now. What a great game he's played. Came to Kevin Walsh. He looks down there toward David Collins, but Greg Williams chips in, and Greg Williams takes a fine mark down there. Deep in the back pocket, Golden Square defending and kicking in this last quarter to the city end. Kick into Ward Rodder. He couldn't mark the ball. Cowling goes in, gets away from Lennigan, fires the hand pass to Kenny oh, good Smith. Good smother, Noel Belsar. Well played, Belsar, but it came back to Cowling. He's well tackled this time by Maloney. And, and a free Maloney kick. gets the free. Maloney's got the free there, Shane, on the half forward line. Now, if he kicks this long, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, Collins not leading, waiting for the long kick. They're only going to go for the sit. Charges in front, punched away. Cole's got it. Danger. One point. 12-8 and uh, Greg Hole every time he touches that ball down at uh, Santos forward line it spells immediate danger for Golden Square he's been very very dangerous around those goal sticks this afternoon now Kenny Smith is going to direct his kick straight to the uh, area where Billy Norber is but Ross Adlam is there this time it beats all players Kevin Walsh in front of Try Pollock to get it away good tackle Pollock ball on the ground ball up we'll see and we've played two minutes of the final term VFL grand final 1983 and it's the Dragons by an even two goals Dalton Square attacking with the breeze fitness is going to tell here well taken out of the air by Hull oh well tackled to Ross Adlam and uh, against you Greg Hull for holding the ball in fact throwing the ball he only had one hand free on that occasion. That was really all he could do. Six with foot it. six, uh, Percy Adlam. There he is. And he's kicking, kicking to his uh, six. Store has given a free. Yes, he's kicking to his six foot four uh, partner in Alan Patterson. And uh, well, there it was called by Richard Jones for you. Uh, Store right into the back of Patterson on that occasion. And it's going to be Alan Patterson to take the free kick. He's on the wing position, out of side. Too far out to score. Puts it down to Ward. Full forward. Oh, up getting Allen there. Comes to the back of the pack. Johnny Williams has got the chance, but an unfavourable bounce. Came to the runner, Bradley Gooch, and he's having a fine second half. And there's a great mark taken Good by mark, Kevin Walsh. Kevin Walsh. A beauty that time out in front of Chris Pollock. Kevin Walsh out of side. Halfback flank drives toward Nalder. Adlam was up. Might have got one around the back of the uh, head that time. Yes. Against you, Billy. And uh, Michael Lennigan, the Sandhurst captain, is going to give the ball back here to uh, Ross Adlam, his opposing captain. And Big Ross right in front here of our broadcasting position with uh, Kent Ward on the mark. He's going to kick now deep into the Golden Square attacking area. Well, not too deep as it turned out. It was a shocking kick. Greg Williams and Frankie Coughlin uh, flew for the mark. Came down to Lee Gallagher. He missed out. Sandhurst can come away with the ball now. And there's the familiar style of Stephen Road driving a pass around the ward. Uh, Greg Hull. Blavey was out in front. Hull got the good bounce. Recovers and kicks toward the running Maloney. Faulkner's on his tail. Who's got pace here? Gary Kerwin goes in. Bundles over Kenny Smith and comes out with the ball. Fires it to Maloney. He has one bounce. Smith on his tail. Took too long. And the hand pass was ineffective. But Sandhurst butter up through McAvale. He plays for the free kick. It doesn't come. Maloney picks up. 
feet, well tackled. Free kick, Golden Free kick, Square. Golden Square, well done, the umpire Red Rod Threlfall. Right on the mark there. Uh, Shane Maloney might have gone a little bit too far. I thought Gary Curran was lucky not to give a free kick away only seconds early. But anyway, uh, Shane Maloney just ran perhaps a second too far. Well, uh, certainly, uh, where was the call for uh, Maloney to kick the ball? As the ball goes out toward the half-back flank, up goes uh, Cowling. But it's uh, been paid a Sandhurst mark here, and the crowd don't like that one. Stephen Road plays on, drives in toward Kent Ward. Mistakes being made now as Kent Ward gets around Pollock and drives toward full forward. And Collins chips it in front of Davey. Couldn't take the mark. They're going in desperately down there as Golden Square try to clear away through Blavey. He's well tackled by Kerwin, picked up by Maloney. And Maloney's made amends. Maloney has kicked that goal for Sandhurst. What a vital goal that is, the uh, first goal of this uh, last quarter uh, going against the breeze, and those flags are still standing out fairly strong. And there's the shot for goal. A great left footer by, uh, Shane, uh, by Brendan Maloney. Sanders, 14-14, 98. Golden Square, 12 goals, 8-80. Greg Hole down behind the play, and as we see, uh, a trainer's going out to attempt him because uh, they need him certainly in this quarter. He's kicked uh, uh, seven goals, or six goals in the match so far, and he's been a dynamic player on the forward line for Sandhurst. He's in the arms of the trainers at the moment. He appears OK as the ball back at the set of bounce. Well, it's excitement plus here as Adlam gets the palm away toward Lee Gallagher and Kent Ward, who's lifted in this last quarter. He drives around toward Malcolm Cowling. Malcolm the Falcon got up, couldn't take the mark. Comes to the ground, there's a push, Golden Square free kick. And the way he played for it, I'd say to be Greg Williams, the Mickelson medal winner. He'll go long now. Look at the torpedo. It's going to land in the goal square. Alan Patterson's up, punched away. Comes to Blorfus, the goal sneak. Kicks into Billy Big Nola. Nola. Billy Nola, what oh, a great goodness. effort. My word, that man is unbelievable. Charged there he is. Down, He's he charged the kick down. And there it goes to Walsh, and Walsh kicks around the wing. But Greg Williams playing that kick behind the play is going to drive the ball back from whence it came. Great grand final at the QEO in Bendigo, premier town of the state. As Greg Williams kicks down toward Big Billy Nalder, who punches away from Patterson, but there was a free kick before that against you, Andrew Storer. Yes, uh, Andrew's uh, adopted that practice as we picked out earlier in the match, Shane. He's leaping early to uh, put the... Uh Taller players off in that Golden Square forward line to with Alan Patterson on this occasion. And uh, this tactic of leaping early uh, may have uh, been uh, working fun on some occasion, not that time. Well, Patterson, he's kicked three already. Here he is, going in towards the city end at the QEO. His kick. Goalie underneath the ball, and he gives the all clear, and there's a goal there to Golden Square, bringing them back a little bit closer there. As Sandhurst, 14 goals, 14, 98. They lead Golden Square, 13 goals, 8, 86. And we've been playing about seven minutes in the final term of the BFL Grand Final. Four goals to Alan Patterson. That's a good one for him. Uh, he uh, That was one that the Golden Square needed. They were three goals behind, and the uh, quarter's getting away. Uh, they needed that goal. Alan Patterson... Uh, Good long kick from a fairly uh, acute angle out on that rotunda side. Through it went. Well, we said before the game the ruck deals would have a great bearing, but I think all ruckmen, Adlam, uh, Patterson and Nolder have all put in. Nolder certainly the best ruckman on the ground, but uh, Square have had their value from their two big bean stalks as Patterson gets the punch away. Punched on further by Kruger. Shane Hartney leads in the race for the ball. He hand passes to Mark Road, who passes well toward Kent Ward. Well shepherded 4-2 by Michael Lennigan. Ah, and, Rod uh, Trelfel doesn't like it. Yes, he uh, says to Michael Lennigan, you were uh, not uh, in the path of that football, and that's a free kick to Porky Rodder. Rodder's got the ball. I thought Lennigan was uh, legal there, but the umpire disagreed. Down it goes where the arms of Bill now to go up. It comes to Belsar. He's well tackled by Coughlin. Beautiful tackle. In goes Kruger on the ball. And there's going to be a ball up, and the crowd right on their toes in this last quarter. Check those scores, Alan. It's pretty tight. Yes, Sanders 14 14 to Golden Square, 13 goals 8. Here's the bounce on the center wing position. Richard Jones just saying there that Belsar doesn't look too good. We'll check out that one in a moment as uh, Greg Williams now has got all the time in the world to run around. Fire on the right foot toward full forward. Up they go. Oh, here's danger. Malcolm Cowling sharks and misses. And he's going to get another kick, Richard. Let's see what the umpire says. Malcolm Cowling down after kicking, was he? A point only, says uh, Rod Threlfall, conferring with the goal umpire. OK, says uh, Rod Threlfall. Have another kick, Malcolm the Falcon Cowling. Now, Richard, does he get both scores here? I don't believe so, Shane. I don't think that point counts. Uh, the goal up has made uh, no uh, effort to uh, award any point at all, and uh, Neville says it won't count. Uh, no, no all clear signal, and uh, Cowling uh, will get another shot from centre half forward. 
Here's his kick, Malcolm Kelly going to the city end, and Golden Square put another goal on the board. Golden Square certainly coming back now as uh, they come a lot closer to Sandhurst in this grand final. We're playing nine minutes in the last quarter. Sandhurst 14-14, Golden Square 14 goals eight. What a Golden. terrific final. It's a magnificent grand final, Alan. Uh, one of the best games of country football I've seen in many a long day. It's had everything, as uh, I've pointed out on a number of occasions during the afternoon. And certainly now, both the runners out on the ground doing plenty of work in the hot <laughs> spring sun in Bendigo. I'll tell you what, I think everyone will be looking forward to a nice cool drink at the end of this one, Richard. It's Fredo been the like, frog. It's Alan been like Killigrew, a day Alan, of the cricket. Alan, Alan Killigrew described it this morning as uh, hopping into Fredo the frog. <laughs> There's the bounce. We're away again as Patterson got up. He got it to Rodder. Golden Square coming home the better. Sandhurst a goal in front. Elkington's under the oh, ball. Oh, good mark. Well called, Richard. A good mark to Elkington. He's on half-back line area. Sandhurst in the defensive zone at the moment. Elkington drives into the breeze around the grandstand wing. Flyers what it comes to the ground. Away goes Sandhurst now. They're looking for runners. They're not forthcoming. Kenny Smith pulled to the ground. Maloney goes in. Fires the hand pass toward Michael Lennigan. In goes Stephen Road. Now Lennigan, the captain's got the chance. He fires it toward Kerwin. All punched away by Davey. You waited too long there, Kerwin. It comes to Kruger now. And uh, Kruger dodges two tackles. Then is put down. Walsh picks up. He goes the wrong way, trying to kick over the head. Frankie Coglin now leads in the race for the ball. He goes for a good hand pass to Greg Hull. You've got time to steady, Mr. Six Goal Man. And he's dispossessed. He goes back in, runs into trouble. Oh, it's pressure football here, Alan. And uh, certainly Hull looked like he was on the way there. Yeah, I thought he was going to uh, get penalised there for holding the ball, but he's uh, been snapped to the ground and Threlfall bounces it again. Eric it goes Patterson and Nolder. Nolder's still jumping, but this time Patterson with the extra height gets it down. Shane Hartney and Johnny Williams going in. Johnny Williams claims the ball, fires the hand pass toward his brother, who dives in in front there of Frankie Coglin. Plays for the free kick, not paid, and the umpire is going to ball it up just marginally. Sandhurst attacking side of centre. We've played for 11 minutes in the final term. There are five points the difference in the Bendigo Football League Grand Final. The Dragons 14 14, the Golden Square Bulldogs 14 9. After Elder tapped it away, it came to Blaby. Blaby got it to Johnny Williams with a poor kick. And Johnny Williams drives down where Sandhurst have got their name written all over this one. And Stora came out Stora. stupid football there. Yes, came out uh, from fullback and uh, charged into the side of uh, Terry Blorfers. And uh, umpire Warren Wigmore had no hesitation in saying uh, that's a free kick uh, indicated that he collided with the side of his uh, neck. Blorfers kicked three goals already. It's a ten and a half forward, a left foot kick. The breeze right behind him. Need to be a good one, Alan. They trail by five points. He can put them in front. There's a good torpedo punt right into the goal square. And there's a mark to Golden Square. Good mark indeed. A strong mark there in the, on the chest. Played Who's on and kicked player? it through. Who was that? I think it's Malcolm the Falcon. I think it is the Cowling. I think it is. He played on. Him. He yes. played on and put it through. And they're a point in front Malcolm Golden the Falcon. Square. Ah, oh boy, are we set for a great finish. The Bendigo Footy League Board of Management couldn't have put on a better show this afternoon they've had everything they've got the weather they've got the crowd and now they've got a magnificent finish to the 83 grand final nothing looks better than the qeo on this first day in october bathed in sunshine green grass 36 excited players and about 6,000 patrons here enjoying it all and uh, countless others watching it on tv8 as Coglin comes away with the ball now he fires it toward uh, that player cowling again but sandhurst go in this time through bradley gooch and the runner gooch now chased by jones drives around that wing, Stephen Rhodes in front and takes a gutsy mark and if he doesn't get paid the mark, he'll get paid the free kick for one around the back of the head and he's earned that one Richard. Yes he does, he looks a very very groggy player too, uh, the trainers are out there uh, the, the uh, trainers are right around him there as we try and check the scores here, the scoreboard's got uh, Sandhurst on 14-14-98 uh, the Golden Square 15-9-99 but uh, we're not sure whether the scores are dead level at the moment or if there's a point in, uh, in it. Well, of course, that may have resulted from the uh, Malcolm Cowling incident, but we'll check on that for you, whether, in fact, the uh, scoreboard put up a point and then a goal or whether, in fact, uh, that point wasn't paid. So if this is a cliffhanger, we may have uh, a pending result after the siren. Now, what's happening, Alan? Is that player going off? Stephen Rhoda being carried from the ground, which is bad luck for Sandhurst. Coglin kicks to full forward. Big flyers wanted. Hull had the chance when it came to the ground, but Golden Square clear through the dashing Kenny Smith, and he fires the pass over to Noel Dillon, and Noel Dillon's got metres now to have a run around the grandstand wing. He fires down toward the half-forward line area, but that ball is out on the full, and the Golden Square crowd don't like it because uh, that player got one after he kicked the ball, which the umpires didn't see, and it's going to come back here to Tony Jones, who's on the mark, and it's going to be Elkington to take the kick for the Dragons. Beautiful drop punt. 
into the breeze. Oh, the Mickelson medal Good winner. Mark Greg Williams. What a mark that was. That's, he went up over the pack, Ruckman and all. There he took the mark. A beautiful grab as he fires at the cowling. Well, there I can cowling at three-quarter time. You can't say too much because they make you look silly. Cowling's playing a sensational last quarter. Johnny Williams goes up. It's at the back of the pack. Storer punches away. In goes Shane Hartney for the Dragons. Oh, a shocker. Straight to Cowling again. Cowling's got Blorfus running. Elgington might beat them both. He fires the hand pass toward the boundary line. In goes the running Jones, and the ball's going to beat all players toward that boundary line area. What's the umpire going to say? In fact, it didn't cross the line. It's going to be a ball up, Allen. What a great job by Elkington. He had two players to contend with there, and he's held the ball to the ground, and the umpire's uh, come in. He's going to bounce it right on the boundary line. Well, of course... Uh I think he made the right move not putting it through for a point there either because in a tight finish like this in a grand final you just can't surrender points and uh, he had to uh, gamble on his luck there and with the pace of Tony Jones on his tail it was a magnificent performance to get out of that one unscathed. We're just checking the scoreboard, uh, Shane. The scores are level in fact. Sanders 14-14-98, uh, Golden Square 15-8-98 and by that clock on the scoreboard, we played 15 minutes. So the scores are level in the 1983 Bendigo League Grand Final. Halfway through the final term, 15 minutes gone. Punch down from Adlam. Elkington goes in. Golden Square trying to get the ball away through. Johnny Williams, I think it may have been. And he's been penalised. Rather uh, hard to see that one. Didn't have much chance to get rid of it. But Elkington's got the ball. He drives out toward Mullaney. Faulkner might have given away a free kick over the top. Punch forward by the Dragons. Michael Lennigan can get around Patterson here. No, Patterson dispossesses him. In it goes toward Bradley Gooch, who's got pace. He'll get away from Kenny Smith and drive up to full forward. Charger Davey over the back. Oh, oh! oh. Well, we said he was a match winner, and of course you can't call him a match winner until the match is won. But he's done everything need be. He's going for goal number seven. He races into the Barnard Street goals, and he kicks and he's it. he's put it through. A goal to Greg Holt. Goal number seven, and Sanders are in front by one one clear goal. Sandhurst 15 14 104, Golden Square 15 18 or 15 8 98. And Alan, that's his number seven. Seventh goal, and that's the sort of goal that would lift the Dragons, I would think. He, he took over the uh, the ball there and he went around Charger Davy and just proceeded to put it through the big ones. And that's the sort of goal that would lift a side in the closing stages of a grand final. What a great grand final this is. We said this would be one of the closest ones for many, many a long day, and what a great match it's turned out. 13 minutes of the 83 season left. There's Nolder still jumping. Got it down to Kevin Walsh, but here's Golden Square relieving. Oh, Smith and Dylan didn't communicate there. And here's Sandhurst through Frankie Coughlin. He's got to pick it up here now. He's having all sorts of trouble. Gets a shove in the back, and there will be He's a He's got a free kick. kick. Uh, Rodney Threlfall says that's a free kick, Frank Coughlin. Thank you very much, this Frank Coughlin, who's had not the best of days. The streamers, the blue and gold streamers, which were being waved over there a minute ago. Uh, very quiet just at the moment, but of course there's plenty of time yet. Richard, and, he had um, uh, three shots for goal in the uh, game so far, direct shots for goal, and he, he's uh, missed all, so he hasn't made the uh, the goal kickers yet. Can he do it this time? Well, uh, Neville uh, says that he's only had nine kicks uh, to the game into three-quarter time. He's had three uh, in this last quarter already. Crowd on their toes. All eyes on Frank Coughlin. Barnard straight in, 35 metres out. Drop punt looks OK. He's put it through. The Maroon and Blue supporters are jumping as the Dragons go back to a two-goal break in the Bendigo Football League Grand Final. And Ross Adlam, the Golden Square captain, sending himself onto the ball. Patterson making the change. Alan Besley, check those scores in a cliffhanger. Well, Sandhurst, 16 goals, 14, leading Golden Square, 15 goals, 8. Two goals, the difference. Golden Square kicking with the aid of the breeze. Warren Wigmore has the ball at the centre bounce. Well, liquid refreshments required here. It's like a day at the cricket in the hot sun, and we have got everything. Sandhurst back to a two-goal break in the grand final. Now can Golden Square lift. Bradley Gooch got it out of the centre, and a good mark to Frankie Coughlin. He's too on the much. wing over there now. Tried to run too far, as Richard said, and Kenny Smith was dispossessed. Oh, they're going in like a demons now, Sandhurst. As the hand pass comes toward Brian Coughlin, in goes Gooch, best man on the ground in the second half. Gives the hand pass to Kevin Walsh, but there's Charger. Charger Davey, good game played by that man. The rock of Gibraltar in defence, one of Golden Square's better players this afternoon. I think he's beaten Collins on the day, there's no doubts about that. He drives to the grandstand side. Mal Cowling got up high, Belsa tackled without the ball. In fact, he paid the mark to Belsa, which uh, was a little bit lucky going Noel's way, but uh, certainly Cowling was the infringer over the top anyway. 
and Bilsar now will drive across toward Billy Nalder, but Maloney was in trouble there, uh, Faulkner against him, but now Kent Ward's got all the time in the world, he goes for home and has missed on this occasion. One point only to the Dragons, and we've played now for 18 minutes in the final term. Yes, at the 18 minute mark, Sandhurst 16 goals, 15, 111, they lead Golden Square, 15 goals, 8, 98. A handy break, halfway through the final term of this BFL Grand Final. A flying shot by young Kent Ward, one of the rookies of the year at the uh, presentations at the Grand Final breakfast this morning. Flying for shot for goal, just faded away a little bit at the end, but that uh, makes it two goals, one. Now, uh, 13 points, Alan, isn't it? It certainly is, and after the kick out, Adler misses what he should have taken. Rodder goes in, he's dispossessed, Blaby's dispossessed, and Sandhurst are fighting like a team possessed at the moment. They've got the more desire in this final 15 minutes. Golden Square need the next goal, I think. No doubts about the fact that Golden Square need that next major now to get back into it. Blaby gets a tap down straight to McAvale. Oh, he was running into the open goal and uh, was dispossessed. It went to Frankie Coughlin, and Frankie uh, is having a shocking day, or it was Kerwin actually that time, and uh, Kerwin's put the ball out on the full. But he backs up well after the kick-out. Lee Gallagher's got the mark, and Lee Gallagher's on the grandstand side. He's on the half-back flank for Golden Square. They've got to go long, and they've got to get the ball moving now. Around the wing, Belsar. Belsar! Yes, a beauty. Right mark. Over the top of Brian Coughlin. And that was one Sandhurst needed. He'll drive toward David Collins. Up goes Gooch. Ball comes to the ground. Kruger's in there. No one can pick it up. Might be a free kick going here, Sandhurst way. And uh, it looks like David Collins to get up and take it. I think he's out at centre half forward now. There's the kick from Collins. He'll look for Hull. Infringed with uh, by Tony Cowling. No free kick. Oh, oh Paul Bow comes through the pack and gets a beauty right on the top of the head. Well, Richard, little you can't Paul say... Bow, little Paul Bow came charging through that pack there. You can't Gutsy say little effort. He didn't earn it, Richard. He certainly did. Whether he can get up and take the kick, we'll have to wait. But uh, he certainly came through the pack there. Uh, uh, Golden Square defence, desperate to try and keep this ball out of this uh, Sanders attacking area, came uh, through in their attempts to uh, stop it, and uh, Bowie got the free. And a 15 minute, uh, 15 metre mark too, and uh, yes, he's not too good. Umpire going over to check. He got 15 minutes against him, and uh, Sandhurst are going to get another player to have a shot for goal. Frankie Coughlin, by the way. Coughlin, it will be, and he'll be kicking to the Barnard Street end of the ground. Young Paul Bow, number 13, still in the hands of the trainers on the ground at the moment. Coughlin kicked one goal already in this grand final in the final quarter. And He's the whistle's gone, it's time on again. Uh, the time off for that little uh, incident there, and now the whistle's gone as Frankie Coggan lines up. What'll he do with this one? He comes in, runs in, and he steered it through. It's a goal to Sandhurst, and that makes it 19 points to the Dragons. 17-15 plays 15 goals, 8. 17-15, 1-1-7 plays 15-8-98. Can Golden Square come back in this last few minutes of the 1983 Grand Final? What a game this has been. 21 minutes into the final term, well called Richard, and uh, well, we've certainly got a game on our hands, but Sandhurst have been the steadier side in the crisis. They've lifted through Coglin and Lennigan and Belsar and uh, these sorts of players. There's the bounce, and it's Nolder still winning those tab outs straight to Bradley Gooch, but his kick is marked by Kruger. Kruger needs to go quickly and needs to go long. Here, look out there for Vic Allen, spoiled by Mark Road. Ball's on the ground. Sandhurst doing it in numbers now as the hand pass comes to Gooch. And Gooch goes around onto the left foot. Well tackled by Brian Coughlin. Comes toward Johnny Williams. In goes Kruger. Billy Nolder tries the smother. Unsuccessful. Over toward Frankie Coughlin and Mal Cowling. Mal Cowling knocks it toward Greg Williams. Oh, the Elkington. Elkington. Good football. Over to Michael Lennigan now. And look at the pass to Bo. Bo looks in here now toward McAvale. Or was it Hull? He misses what he should have taken. Sandhurst butter up now. Free kick against them this time. And uh, it's going to be a goal. Yes, uh, charge into, the, uh, into that pack uh, regardless. Mark Blaby, the man with the ball. Blaby uh, now. Charge in with that sort of fanaticism at the moment, didn't they, uh, Shane, then? Oh, look, they're playing like a team possessed. He's found Pollock, uh, Blaby. Pollock's going to go for a run here. He's going to have all sorts of trouble getting around McAvale. Did so. Left foot torpedo toward Johnny Williams, who marks. They need runners now, Golden Square. They need goals quickly. They've got the breeze behind them. He's looked out there for Brian Coglin, and Coglin has Coughlin. been paid the mark. Yes. In fact, I think the umpire officially paid it in the back for the record books, but uh, Brian Coglin, he's about uh, 55 metres out. He's uh, on a slight angle, about a 30 to 40 degree angle. Grandstand side, kicking to the city end goals. It's off the side of the boat. It's gone over the boundary line on the full. 
And I've just got that feeling, Richard, that this game is slipping away from Golden Square. Well, I haven't done enough in this quarter, Shane. There's no doubt about it. They've only added, uh, what have they added? Uh, three goals uh, with the win, while Sanders have added uh, four goals, uh, three. Frankie and, Coughlin uh, gets the ball. He's on the half-back line, kicks in toward the centre. This allows Johnny Williams to pass to Brian Coughlin, and Coughlin will have a second chance. He's about 10 metres closer on this occasion. He's about, uh, let's say, uh, 35 to 40 metres out. On the same angle, Alan. Let's see what he does. Here's Coughlin's kick. It's a nice kick going in towards goal, and the umpire underneath the ball, and there's a the goal, goal for uh, the comeback goal for Golden Square, scored by Brian Coughlin from the, the half-forward flank. And... Uh, Golden Square are now coming back. 16 goals, 8. They trail Sandhurst, 17 goals, 15. Well, we're approaching the time on mark. And, uh, of course, uh, Golden Square have got to get the next couple of goals if they're going to take out this flag. 13 points the difference. It's, uh, it's certainly a game and a half, isn't it? It's been a terrific last quarter. This game has been a bottler. There's the bounce down in the centre again. We're away in the grand final with Adlam going up against Billy now. This time it's Adlam leaping the higher. He gets it out toward Walsh and Belsar, who both stop. Coglin runs through. He's got the chance to keep going. Now Golden Square pick up through Lee Gallagher. Hand pass to the Mickelson medal winner, Greg Williams. Back to Lee Gallagher. Here's danger. Gallagher fires. Shane Hartney waiting in the goal square. And Hartney takes the relieving mark. Well, a goal there to Golden Square would have been handy. Hand pass comes out to Kevin Walsh. Billy Nald is led on the wing, and the pass is right down the big policeman's throat. Big Billy. Oh, oh like what that, a great he? game. The people will have to clap him off the ground. Big Billy. He, uh, he got 20 votes to be equal third in the Mickelson medal. There's the hand pass from Kenny Smith across to Johnny Williams. Back to Greg Williams. Now they've got their running game going. It goes to Danger Man Cowling. Look at the torpedo punt drifting away with the breeze. One point only. We are just into time on. We've played 25 minutes and Golden Square must kick two goals in time on to level the grand final scores, Alan, as you check them. Yes, as we check the scores, Sandhurst 17-15, Golden Square 16 goals, 9, and Golden Square becoming a little more desperate in the dying uh, moments of this grand final. After the kick out, Elkington's got the mark. Doesn't know which way to go. And might have put this one out in the full. No. Yes. He has, he says. Well, we were right below that, Richard, and yeah. I thought it might have uh, been a mark to uh, Maloney, but the umpire's the one with the last say. And it's going to be uh, Chris Pollock. Lean Chris Pollock to get the game going. Gets a hand pass to his captain, Adlam. Torpedo falls in the goal square. Golden Square players up. Patterson had his hands on the ball. Couldn't get away with it. The hand pass comes out to Bo. And Bo's up and fit again as he runs the ball to the grandstand side. He'll look out there for Stephen Road and Noel Dillon. And the ball has bounced over the boundary line this time. Bounced over. And no, uh, no, no penalty free kick to Golden Square that time. Uh, Bowie uh, just had the right on the line, looks like. Here's the throw in. Nalder gets a beautiful tap away. Stephen Rhodes in there with Dillon. Stephen Rhodes has got the ball moving, but there might be a free kick against you, Stephen Rhodes, I'd imagine. And 15 metres, but Noel Dillon's going to take this kick. Can Golden Square get up from here? They're two goals down. We've played 26 minutes of the final term in what's been one of the classic Bendigo League grand finals. 17-15 to 16-9. Long kick this time. Big flyers wanted. Patterson had the hands on the ball. Came to Coglin. He got rid of it over there now where uh, Jones goes in. Gets the hand pass further afield. Jones has got the chance as he fires toward the goals. And there's and Hartney again on his own. Hartney. Too many Golden Square players worried about getting that vital goal and uh, Shane Hartley twice. Very, very uh, important marks. Kicks toward Bradley Gucci, misses out this time, but punches on well. But uh, Percy Adlam goes in, takes the ball away, gets it to Pollock. Over now to Vic Allen. They're trying to get their game moving. Vic Allen will get a free kick here, no doubts about that. A push in the back against, uh, might have been Kent Ward there. Paul Bow uh, arguing with the decision. But this uh, Golden Square player now can come back. Vic Allen it is. They have a shot for goal. Will I'm land in the goal square. Patterson at the back. Couldn't mark. Comes down where Coglin's got the chance. Puts his body in. Gets it to the goal sneak. Blorfus. This is danger for Sandhurst. Holding the ball. Dropping the ball. Whatever you like. And it's going to be 15 metres two against Golden Square. I don't think there's a person on this ground, left this ground yet. There's a blue, red and uh, maroon and uh, blue flag waving down just inside our broadcasting box. I can't see one person leaving this ground, Shane. And uh, do you blame them, Richard? It's no, what beauty. a game. Well, it's going to be a Sandhurst free kick to be taken here now. Oh, it's Wayne Pickering driving around the wing. Adlam in front. Couldn't hold the mark on that occasion. Sandhurst have got Nick Lanigan. Here he is, the Sandhurst captain. He breaks one tackle. Fires the hand pass to Gooch. Gooch. Gooch has got pace. Gets away from Kruger. Fires toward McAvale. But Golden Good Square. Good mark, Golden Square. It was a good one. Mark Tony Cowling. 
Tony Calling drives out Tony toward Kelly Smith, and he's got plenty of time now. He can get the hand pass across to Charger Davey. Pollock backing up well. Charger Davey runs around that Sandhurst opponent, drives in toward the centre. Greg Williams and Johnny Williams wait. Johnny Williams has got the mark. They need a goal quickly, Golden Square. Johnny Williams kicks long out toward the grandstand side. Patterson flies. He's got it. He's got it. Now, let's see what the umpire says here. The Sandhurst crowd didn't like it. From where we are, Richard, I've got a feeling that may have gone through his hands and the umpire blew the whistle. But we're not going to know. As uh, Patterson lines up, this will put Golden Square within one goal. It's home. It's home. It's a goal. One. Alan Patterson has kicked a goal. One and goal. that's his fifth goal for the match. And this has turned into a real cliffhanger. Richard, I've got a feeling. I don't like to say it. Could you butter up again next week? We I might don't know. be, Alan. Uh, I think they're doing the ground, aren't they, next week? Uh, could be cricket on it. this ground, so uh, this is going to be a magnificent finish. Looks like we've played about four minutes into time on. There's probably only a couple of minutes to go, and just one goal the difference. Can Golden Square get back? Well, they need a goal now to level and draw the grand final. Adlam and Nolder up in the centre. Couldn't be more than a minute or two to go. Gooch sharks it out, and Gooch kicks toward half forward. It's Stephen Road leading in the race for the ball. In goes Kenny Smith. He fires the hand pass to Charger Davey. Charger Davey kicks toward the centre, but Paul Bow makes good position. He kicks for the boundary line. That's good thinking from the Sandhurst Rover. In leads Dylan. He's in front of Road. Oh, well tackled too. It went over the boundary line when the tackle was on, and precious minutes now being wasted as that time clock ticks. Uh, to the 28-minute mark of the final term, and there's one goal of difference. Sandhurst 17-15, Golden Square 17-9. Percy Adlam punches away. Oh, but Billy Nelder got the that time, Percy. Uh, Billy Nelder got the fist to adjust in time and uh, went toward the boundary line. And uh, certainly Golden Square now have got to get this ball into play while it's on the Sandhurst forward line. And over in that pocket, there's no value at all for the square. Now let's see what happens as Belsar goes in. He gets it towards Stephen Rhodes. Stephen Rhodes turns it around the corner. Watch that bounce as Kenny Smith chases. Oh, there was a bit of an infringement there too, but Smith got away with it. He kicks in toward Chris Pollock. Pollock, he's got yards in front of Maloney, but in goes Gooch. It's a bad bounce. Frankie Coglin waits. He picks up. He's got time to get a hand past the Gooch, and Gooch will go long. Now can the big flyers come? McAvale and Cowling punched away from McAvale. In goes Greg Hull. Tony Cowling is the winner on this occasion, and he drives around where Greg Williams Greg has Williams taken a good mark. Here they come now, the square. It's Pollock and Maloney. Maloney chipping in that time in front of Chris Pollock. And it's going to be over the boundary line. Great desperate defence from Brendan Maloney. Somehow, one gets a feeling the siren's going to go any minute and spoil Golden Square's chances. Well, that heart of mine is beating at a rapid rate as Billy Nolder again takes it out oh, of the air. Oh, good play, Billy Nolder. And puts it toward the boundary and that's line. And that's the experience of a, of a big-time player. Look at that. Grab the ball out of the pack. Whistles it down the boundary line, and what happens to it? Rolls out of bound. Valuable seconds tick away. Great kick for touch in rugby terms. No doubts about that. It was Adlam and Nutt and Alder again. Adlam gets it down. Frankie Coglin chips in. Might have got a free kick here. Yes, he earned it. He has. Frankie Coglin's got the free. Well, well, well. He'll take all the time you like now. As Charger Davy races back. Paul Bowes at centre half forward, unmarked. You can see the big crowd. You can see the score on your screen. One goal the difference. Sandhurst in attack. Here's the pass to Michael Lennigan, left completely unattended. And what a thing to do when your side's a goal down in a grand final. We've played 29 and a half minutes. I wouldn't expect more than about a minute or two to go now. It's going to be a long quarter. There's been a couple of hold-ups. Michael Lennigan, the Sandhurst captain, I'd say a score will give them the premiership. There's the pass from Collins. And I would say there's the premiership because Collins has marked and he's only 15 metres out. He's on the slightest of angles. And the way that uh, Kenny Smith chased Collins up the field then, he looked like a very tired player indeed. There it is, and David Collins will have the shot off the siren. There it is, he doesn't care where he kicks it. And uh, just incidentally, he's kicked the point. So it's now his seven points. 17, 16. 118 have won the Bendigo League 1993 Premiership, defeating Golden Square 17-9, 111. Alan Besley, a real heart stopper. Well, that's one of the best grand finals I think we could ever see. We've predicted all the week that this is going to be a magnificent finish to uh, the Bendigo Football League season, and who could wish for a better finish than a seven-point margin? And the Sandhurst Football Club, 17 goals, 16, winning the big one from Golden Square, 17 goals. Goals nine. Checking the goal kickers. Greg Hole for Sandhurst kicked seven. 
Three goals to David Collins and also Brendan Maloney. Two goals to Frank Coughlin and one each to Bill Nolder, who played a terrific game, and so too did Mick Lanigan in the last quarter. And for Golden Square, we saw a magnificent performance by their ruckman, Alan Patterson, who kicked five goals. Three goals to Terry Blorfers, two goals to Lee Gallagher and Mal Cowling, and one each to John Williams and Tony Jones, and also the half-forward flanker, Brian Coughlin. What a great finish, Shane. Eh? Oh, it was a beauty, uh, Alan. I haven't seen uh, as good a grand final as that anywhere for quite a few years and had everything in this game. And uh, right from the word go in that first uh, minute and a half, or first half a minute, really, it was on for young and old. Percy Adlam gave a backhander, and every player on the ground was into it. They were certainly ready and uh, fired up and raring to go. And there was no doubt about the fact that both coaches had uh, told their sides, if something happens early, be in it, get involved. There's the quarter-by-quarter quarter scores. It was the Dragons by 11 points at quarter time. The Bulldogs by six seven at half time, the Dragons by ten at three quarter time, and the Dragons Premiers by seven points in a magnificent game of football and I'll check some better players before Richard summarises the game. I thought for Golden Square, Johnny Williams was a great player, Greg Williams was a superb player for them, Mal Cowling lifted in that last quarter, he was uh, probably one of their more uh, consistent players on the day, they did fade in the third term uh, Noel Dillon was a consistent defender with Mark Blaby, they got good value out of Alan Patterson and also Big Ross Adlam and I thought certainly uh, Charger Davey. What a magnificent game from Big Charger. He was uh, one of their better players all day. He gave Collins no room at all. And I think uh, between Greg Williams, Johnny Williams and uh, Charger Davey for the Golden Square best player. On your screen a moment ago, the Sandhurst boys enjoying the champagne. Let's check some better players for the Dragons. Billy Nolder, undoubtedly best man on the ground. I thought uh, other good players for the side were uh, Mark McAvale and Greg Hull on the forward line. Stephen Road, Brendan Maloney did uh, what he did very, very well indeed. Storer was a good defender for them. And I thought also that uh, Kevin Walsh played a good game. And Bradley Gooch, we can't leave him out, Richard. He had 16 kicks in the second half alone. That was an excellent performance by Bradley Gooch and I've just marked uh, down in my uh, notebook here that uh, when the uh, was only one goal in it the uh, scores were 17 15 117 to 17 9 111 it was Bradley Gooch who grabbed the ball from that very very vital bounce left footed it up into the half forward line and got the ball away moving up uh, into his uh, own team's attacking zone. Richard why do you think Sandhurst won? Well I suppose uh, how could we summarize the game when there's only seven points in it? Uh, there they are. Uh, they'll be getting the Bandigo Advertiser Cup any minute now, the, uh, the Mighty Dragons. Uh, no uh, shame at all, of course, to the Golden Square Club. What a tremendous club, Golden Square. Only went down by uh, seven points in a real cliffhanger. Um, I suppose Sanders, Bill Nolder's influence in the game is absolutely outstanding. Uh, no doubt in anyone's mind why he got 20 votes in the Mickelson medal. Uh, 14 kicks, but he had... Uh, uh, 10 marks and uh, was working uh, around the ground uh, like a pack horse. I mean, I think Bill Nolder should sleep very, very soundly tonight. Sandhurst, the 1983 Bendigo Football League Premiers. There's Cliffy Pinder, the Bendigo Advertiser, Chief Photographer, on the balcony, ready to get the shots for Monday's paper. The boys there in the, uh, in the frame now are, uh, are uh, Shane Hartley, number one, uh, Big Billy Nolder himself. There's the powerhouse, the workhorse, Billy Nolder. Uh, the... the uh, the fact that Bill did well in the ruck, I suppose. Uh, the centre line, Frank Coughlin bumbled a fair amount, but uh, the wingers uh, got a lot of possession for their side. That was uh, uh, Gooch uh, in the second half. Uh, Stephen Road all game, I thought, played well. Yes, I gave... Um, uh, I some gave... players disappointing. Bob Elkington was a bit disappointing. Kevin Walsh, uh, great uh, first half. Um, and the Nolder medal will be given to the best player on the ground. Of course, it and Bill Nolder got yeah. the best player on the ground, and deservedly so. Yes. The uh, Nolder Memorial Medal goes to Big Bill Nolder. So what a... Uh, well, there's his catch cry coming across. That's what they say to him at Sandhurst. Well, I go three votes to Billy Nolder, two votes to Greg Hull, and one vote to Greg Williams. I thought Greg Williams kept on plugging all day, and in that last quarter, when the pressure was on, he was there all the time, marking and driving the ball forward, wasn't he? Oh, great player, Greg Williams, there's no doubt about it. Uh, he's striving right into those last four or five minutes to get the team into attack. He and his brother uh, really burst hard. Uh, and uh, that was uh, no fault of theirs that uh, that the team went down by the seven points. Well, Richard, if Managing anyone... editor of the Bendigo Advertiser, Mr Reg McDonald, making the presentation to the uh, Sandhurst Club. There's Bill Bonney, the chairman of the league there, uh, former Golden Square great player himself. Uh, very pleased, I would think, to, to see what a tremendous game it had been. Well, Richard, if uh, anyone had doubts, and uh, Alan also, that uh, country football wasn't alive and well, they were certainly costing a very big way today, weren't they?
Yes, and to our Sanders, viewers, right Mick across Lanning country, Victoria. They've, they've seen a magnificent match this afternoon, and uh, football is certainly alive and well in Bendigo. We saw the league in turmoil at the end of last year. We didn't know what the future was over the summer. We, the uh, Victorian Country Football League stepped into this league, appointed a border management, and what a great finish. Oh, it's a superb game this afternoon, and uh, congratulations to uh, all players concerned. Congratulations to the board of management. Great to see a great crowd here, and it's been very enjoyable, Alan, working with both uh, you and Richard, and uh, well, I think the better side won on the day, but Golden Square, commiserations, they put up a magnificent performance. Yes, thank you very much, Shane, and uh, thanks to our statistician, Neville Klein, for providing all the stats during the afternoon, and to you, Richard, thank you very much for your expert comments, and of course, people in Bendigo will be re uh, reading all about the great match in the advertiser on Monday morning. Yes, we'll have a big cover for them, Alan. And uh, just a final note, the golden uh, for the uh, free kicks for the afternoon, Golden Square 46, Sandhurst 41. Well, just repeating the final scores at the Queen Elizabeth Oval, Bendigo, Sandhurst 17 goals, 16, 118, Golden Square 17 goals, 9, 111. Uh, uh, just a seven-point win to Sandhurst, and they're the Premiers for 1981. We say goodbye to the people throughout country Victoria and trust you've enjoyed this TV8 sporting presentation.